but to go from 21 weeks to 20 weeks, uh, it's going to cost us $300 of crashing. Um, and what, what activity needs to be crashed? Look under activity D, you see now the number 1. So essentially from blank, it went to 1. So D must be crashed one week if I want to bring the project from 21 weeks to 20 weeks. Now, um, I can um, uh, edit the data and go to single time estimates and it said that D must be crashed one week so if I go to from five weeks to four weeks and now solve it you'll see that the project goes down to 20 uh, weeks and my critical activities still remain the same although um, the slack changes a little bit slightly um, so you can um, test this uh, step by step um, and solve these problems um, so that you can see the progression of the crashing that's involved. Um, this document that I have here in fact takes you through all of that so if you're patient and you study it you will gain a lot of benefit from it in terms of what's involved in crashing. So I know it's um, a little bit painstaking and I know that it takes effort and time and patience but if, it t if I spent the time um, to create this document, I think it's um, worthwhile for you to study it too. Um, okay, so I will um, go back to edit the data and I will go back to crashing and I will solve it. And here are the results that we were um, sharing before. So I'm, I want to take this back to where we were and um, okay um, so what does it take to go from 20 weeks to, to 19 weeks again look in that row the only thing uh, compare this row to the row above it. Compare the row for 19 and 20 uh, weeks, these two rows. Um, the only thing different between those two rows is that activity D had a 1 under it before, now it has a 2. So that means that to go from 20 weeks to 19 weeks, activity D must um, be crashed one more week. That's another $300. And where do I get that $300 from? Remember activity D um, has a $300 cost of crashing per period. Um, so um, that brings our running sum total or our cumulative cost uh, from um, 300 to 600. So 300 plus 300 gives me 600. If you notice this is like a cumulative um, uh, frequency distribution that you studied back in chapter 2 of the statistics book. Going from 19 to 18 um, look at the row difference between row 18 and the one above it for row 19. Um, you can see that uh, D is still the same from 2. Uh, it's consistent, it doesn't change. But now activity E goes from blank to 1. So E must be crashed one week. Cost of crashing E per week is 350. So running sum total is 350 plus 600, that's 950. And you can go down the line and do all of this analysis. Now, going down from 17 to 16, please pay attention that um, the only thing different between those two rows is uh, F has a, gets a 1 and G gets a 1. Uh, so that means both F and G each must be crashed one week if we are to reduce project time from 17 weeks to 16 weeks. Um, that is a period cost of 810. So going from 17 weeks to 16 weeks is going to cost us $810. Um, F and G, here's the 450 for F, here's the 360 for G. Summation of the two is 810 and that's where the 810 comes from. But the 810 plus the cumulative cost already gives us uh, $2,426 uh, 
Um, so understanding this up until now. If I were to tell you uh, that we're interested in reducing project time from 21 weeks to 16 weeks, what do you recommend to do? You should say that we should crash B one week, D two weeks, E, F, and G each one week, and all of that is going to cost us a total of $2,426 and some change. Um, but the overall cost of the project is going to be that number, which is the cost of crashing up to that point, plus the 18700 normal cost. That would be the total cost of project uh, to finish it in 16 weeks. Now, if I were to tell you what does it take um, to go from 16 weeks to 15 weeks, let's say that we've already crashed the project down to 16 weeks, and now we want to crash it yet another week to go to 15 weeks for the total project time. Your answer should be that E must be crashed one week. I'm sorry, not E. F must be crashed one week, and G must be crashed one week. Um, that's another $810. Uh, which means uh, 300 and, uh, 450 for F and 360 for G. What if I tell you um, we have crashed the project um, down to 14 weeks and now we want to go down to 13 weeks? Uh, what does it take? You should say A must be crashed one week, going from blank to one, and B must be crashed one week, going from one to two. So to go from 14 to 13 weeks of project time, uh, just one week reduction in project time requires two weeks of activity crashing. One week of A to be crashed and one week of B to be crashed for a total cost of $1,066.60 for that one week of crashing of the project time. Um, and finally, if I were to tell you uh, what does it take to crash the project from 21 weeks to 12 weeks, you would say two weeks of A, three weeks of B, not, no crashing for C, two weeks of D, one week of um, E, two weeks for F, two weeks for G, and one week for H and that would cost $6,370 of crashing cost um, over and above the 18700 normal cost of crashing. So you will see that the last row in the crash schedule is essentially the same, giving you the same information that um, this column is giving you under the project management results window. Um, the thing to keep in mind is um, that um, at some point in um, almost all projects, uh, in order to reduce project time one week, uh, you may end up having to crash two or more activities. In this case, for instance, going from 17 to 16 weeks, F and G both need to be crashed, and the reason for that is because F and G are on uh, two separate uh, critical paths. They're both critical and they're both on two separate paths. Here is G on this path, which goes from A, C, G, H, and here's F that's on the path um, B, D, E, F. So, um, Oh, I'm sorry, BGH. B at some point over here is where I've um, told you that the critical pa critical activities change. And so, um, anyways, um, but when we have uh, more than one critical path and um, uh, we have activities that um, are on both of those paths, if we want to reduce the project time, we have to reduce um, all of the critical paths and therefore it would require more than one uh, activity to crash. Um, and of course you would go based on uh, the least cost uh, option uh, so that you can be economical in your crashing. Um, that's essentially it. Um, again, it, I would highly recommend that you uh, read um, uh, the 
document in my course handouts, which is called Crashing Dissection. Uh, I know it's long, but it would be worth your while to understand all the nitty-gritty of everything that's involved. Thank you.